Good afternoon, everybody. This is Bob Iaccino from Path Trading Partners. My co-founder, Mike Arnold, is here with me, as always. And thanks again to Nadex for having us. And this is Building a Trading Plan Part 2. If you did not see Building a Trading Plan Part 1, or if you didn't see our Insight into the Trader's Mind webinar that we did, they're actually very easy to find. You can find them on our website, or you could very simply go to Nadex's website, which you'll see on the screen right now, and go to Learning Center, Webinar Archives, and this is part two, and really what's a three-part series, so it's part three. But uh, here's Building a Trading Plan, part one. You can watch that one. And we did some null point, but then a couple of weeks back, we did um, Understanding the Trader's Mind, which is probably on page two here. Um, there it is. Become a better, better Nadex binary and spread trader by understanding the trader's mind. So you can find those there. Otherwise, you can uh, look at Nadex's YouTube site. They're on there as well. But this is part two of the trading plan section of sort of the psychology and the makeup of a trader, which we're, we're pretty fond of doing. But before we start, as, as always, take care of a quick risk statement. Again, this is a risk statement not a disclaimer. A disclaimer implies that we don't care what it says. We're just trying to cover our butts and that's not what we're doing. We're actually trying to inform you guys. So, this presentation is not for information, I'm sorry, this presentation is for information purposes only and does not constitute investment advice, nor an offer, solicitation, or recommendation to acquire or dispose of any investment or to engage in any other transaction. This presentation is not intended for solicitation purposes, but only for use as general information. All descriptions, examples, and calculations contained in this publication are for illustrative purposes only. The risk of loss in trading can be substantial. You should therefore carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Past performance is not indicative of future results. I always like noticing this because we have about half the amount of people that we had in part one. And if those are mostly, if I were to assume they're mostly repeats, which they don't have to be, the set of people we have here today are the ones that are probably committed to trading in a serious way, as opposed to just kind of trying it out or just kind of doing it as a hobby. Because without a trading plan, you're doomed to repeat mistakes. And it's difficult, if not impossible, to succeed in trading. So Path Trading Partners, who are we? We're a trading and education firm. We also back proprietary traders, given the right situation. Pat Trading Partners' mission was to form a trading firm that educates, supports, and backs traders who are committed to probabilities, discipline, and long-term trading success. This is achieved by following the correct path. We are not high-frequency traders. We are not day traders. What we are is a firm that believes in a long-term success in trading, covering time frames dictated to us by products, markets, and price action. Again, what we mean by that is the market tells us what trades to take. We let the market show us which way it wants to go, and then we take those trades. We don't dictate to the market what we want to do. As I mentioned, my co-founder Mike Arnold is here, and he's a 24-plus year market veteran who's been teaching traders online and in person for 10 plus years. Mike continues to work as a strategy and development consultant to multiple hedge funds. I call him a professional devil's advocate. What Mike's job with those hedge funds is, is they come up with a strategy and they hire Mike to break the strategy or to tell them what's wrong with it. He's a former options market maker on multiple exchanges. He has traded in Chicago, New York, Switzerland, and Canada. And he is the current head of technology and trading systems development for Path Trading Partners. I am the guy in the pink shirt on the right. I'm not the woman with the V-neck dress on. Um, I've been around for about 24 years in the commodities, futures, and forex markets. Coming up about 25 now. And I've been teaching and mentoring traders both live and online since about 2002. Um, I've been an analyst, a proprietary trader, and a fund of hedge funds principal, as well as being a member of the investment committee in that fund of funds where my job was to look at emerging managers, so managers with um, three years of track record or less. 
So I've seen a lot of strategies, and I've been able to judge strategies over the years. I've taught and mentored over 5,000 students to date. I appear on TV a lot on the financial news channels, and I still appear about five to ten times per month. I've done about 700, and it's probably 750 interviews at this point. I will be on Bloomberg Television tomorrow at 6.20 Eastern Time, 7.20 Central Time. So, before we get started, let's do a quick Lecture 1 review. In Part 1, we looked at many of the elements of a complete trading plan, and in the beginning, you may not have all this information to put into your plan. However, a trading plan is not a one-shot deal. Your plan is going to grow with you as a trader and hopefully contain all the elements we outlined as it grows over time. One of the problems people have in starting a trading plan is that it seems daunting. It seems like a lot of work. Trading is a lot of work. It's very rewarding, but it is a lot of work. So if you're serious about it, a trading plan is something that you're going to put the work into. And this slide essentially tells you that you're not going to get it done in one sitting. You're not going to sit down and have every element you need. It's going to be a living document. It's not a one-shot deal. So one of the things you get out of your trading plan is you start to establish a feedback loop. So what you need to do to succeed is, is understand what a feedback loop is and realize how your trading plan is providing that for you. You've got the trader in this diagram on the left who follows his trading plan, executes trades, and ends up with some form of P&L here on the right. Now, the executed trades go into a trade journal, and then comments go into a trade log, and all of this provides what we call a feedback loop. There are positive feedbacks and negative feedbacks in that loop. Now, the word positive and negative don't necessarily have the same meaning you would as a positive statement by a person or a negative statement by a person. A negative feedback in your feedback loop just means that you're going to remove something from your plan or your process or your, um, your completed trading plan, a positive feedback, mean, feedback loop means you're going to add something to it. So they actually take on uh, the meaning of addition and subtraction, not good and bad. So a positive feedback loop, you're adding something. A negative feedback loop, you're taking something out. One of Mike's best examples of what that is is if you are baking a cake and you taste the cake and it's got too much sugar, that's negative feedback. So next time you bake the cake, you take sugar out. That's negative feedback loop. Positive feedback loop is the cake's dry. Maybe you add more milk, you add more eggs to moisten the cake a little more. That's positive feedback in your feedback loop. So don't think of it as positive and negative being um, good and bad. Positive and negative is either addition or subtraction. So that's what the plan, as well as the journal and log, which we're going to go into today, effectively does for you, is it creates a trading feedback loop. So the trading journal, you need to have a notebook or some kind of journal that's open on your trading desk where you can jot down things as they come up during the trading day. Write down anything on your mind and how you are feeling physically, emotionally before you start trading. Also make entries about market conditions as you review the charts uh, while you're away from your computer and not watching the markets. So a journal essentially is your feelings, your thoughts, your emotion, um, your environment, things that you're observing. There's several instances in real trading where those things matter. I told this story before, but I'll tell it again really quick. I had a trader at a prop shop that I worked in Chicago. Prop means proprietary, for those of you that don't know. And he was a very successful trader within our shop, and he decided he wanted to move to Southern California to trade. This was in downtown Chicago. And he asked if he could trade from home a couple of days a week to get used to trading from home. And every, we, of course, said it was okay because he was a good trader. And every time he traded from home, he had problems, okay? He had bad trades. Uh, he was exiting trades early. He was putting on trades he shouldn't have. He was covering stops early. And we couldn't fit him, figure out what was wrong. So one day when he came in, we went through his training journal, and we noticed that on the vast majority of his bad days, he had marked into his trading journal that his dog was driving him crazy. Whether it was the barking, the pacing, he put in there actually dog barking is driving me crazy. So we were actually able to take a look at that and say, wow, the dog is stressing him out. It's one more responsibility he didn't have in the office. Somehow this is affecting him. And when he removed the dog from the situation, he actually started to go back 
to some of his regular habits, his good habits. That's the kind of thing that a trading journal does. Those are the kind of minute details that you want to put into a trading journal. So what's going through your mind throughout your trading day? Emotions and thoughts that arise during the trading day. Emotions and thoughts that arise when entering or exiting a trade. Again, part of your plan is so that you know what to do before you're in a trade. One of the worst times to make a decision about a trade is when you're in it because of the emotions and thoughts that arise. But if you have a journal, you can have your plan all set for what you're gonna do with that trade, but then you can write down the thoughts and emotions that arise while you're in the trade. Things helping you during your trading day, um, things causing you issues during your trading day. Again, the dog was causing this particular trader issues. Maybe um, a positive thing would be that you know, you, you make your lunch ahead of time and have it on the desk, or possibly getting away for lunch helps you because it helps to calm you down. These are the kind of things you would write in there. Anything relating to physical health, I'm sick, I'm tired, I can't sit still, I'm anxious for too much coffee, which would have been the case with me until I finally got used to the dozen espressos a day that I have. Um, you're bored, unfocused, etc. Anything that's affecting your trading, whether it be positive or negative, emotional, structural, thoughts, feelings, physical feelings, anything that you're feeling goes into a trading journal. Any information that you think would be helpful concerning your trading should go into your trading journal. There is no right or wrong information. Okay, if in between trades you walk over to CNBC and you think, wow, um, this particular host drives me crazy, put that in there. Okay, because you'd have no idea what's going to actually affect you down the road when you're reviewing this stuff. Now, writing it down makes it real and also helps you remember things. And this is very important when reviewing your trades. If you're missing trades, then it's important to note in your journal what you were doing when you missed the trade entries. This is extremely important. Over time, things will begin to jump out at you. Maybe you have a habit of going to make yourself another cup of coffee at around 9.15. Okay, and you haven't noticed, you've missed three trades this week, all right around the same time, and you've written down, missed the trade was getting coffee, missed the trade again was getting coffee, missed the trade again was getting coffee. You notice that the coffee timing is probably wrong for your particular strategy. These things are necessary to establish a feedback loop. Again, there is no right or wrong information. I tell traders all the time that on the weekends, Instead of reading Barron's or the Wall Street Journal or any of that thing, those things, the first thing you should be reading is your trading journal. Reading it and seeing if you're picking up on any patterns. Now the trade log, they are two different things. One of the most important aspects of trading, it's a way to measure your performance. It's extremely important for analyzing trades to determine the validity of a trade entry. Was it the right trade at the right time? The validity of a trade exit. Did I exit at the right time or did I just want to take a winner? Did my emotions take over? Did I get out at the right time or did I get out early? Did I get out too late? Proper trade management. Okay, again, did I follow my plan? Did I move my stop when I wasn't supposed to move it? Did I take my hand off the mouse when my plan tells me not to touch the mouse once my target and stop are in place? Proper position sizing, did I take the proper amount of risk? Did I take too much risk? Did I take too little risk? Position sizing is actually the correct way to manage risk. Okay, it's not dollar amount, it's position sizing. Your trade log provides information to review trades and ensure strategy and strategies and rules are not violated. And this is important for generating key trading statistics. You may never want to do this, but if you do ever want to take your trading success and move it forward into managing money for others, it's not an overnight thing, for the record. It's not something that you guys should plan on doing in six months, because it's not going to happen. But if you ever want to take it that way, you need key trading statistics, and you need a lot of data to be able to prove out strategies to people who may want you to manage their money. So logging the trades. You can log your trades while trading either electronically in a spreadsheet or some people like to record them by hand on trade cards or trade sheets. I still use trading cards and then I move them uh, on the weekends, I move them to a spreadsheet. Mike goes directly into a spreadsheet. If you record them by hand, then I would suggest you enter them into software or a spreadsheet at some point during the trading day. Again, 
This is so you can gather stats on your trading and begin to establish a feedback loop with your trading plan. Without doing this, without getting to the point where you're establishing that feedback loop, this is all just busy work. That's why it's so important that the log and the journal that you're working with these things simultaneously. I'm going to turn it over to Mike now to go over some of the metrics that you'll be able to develop and look at when you actually have begun working with your trading plan and your trade log and your trade journal. Great, thanks, Bob. So, as Bob said, I mean, I suggest most people, even if you write them down by hand, you get some kind of software or you can build your own Excel spreadsheet. You can, there's a few of them out there. Uh, it doesn't have to be that complex. When you first begin, you'll probably get, it will develop over time into more complexity as you get to be a better and better trader and you want to look at more and more stats. Uh, if you're manually logging your trades, you can just, you can print out sheets like this. This is just an ex example. It's a trade sheet. You, you can put down all your different trades, all your different entries, your exits. If you have multiple lots on, multiple exits, your stop price, your target price, your notes, and you can put down how it is. This this is, you know, it says a future symbol, but you can put down your uh, Nadex binary symbol your, or your uh, spread symbol. You know, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just a, a generic sheet that you're going to put your e entries and exits and notes down and then how it turned out. And if you had a stop, a target, these kinds of also help you notice if you're moving your stop early or if you're getting out before your stop was hit because you thought it would be hit instead of waiting for it to actually get hit. Or if you're taking it off, you have a target price in mind, but you're exiting the trade early before it actually gets to the target. Those are the kind of things you can start noticing just by logging. You can also get some kind of trade log software. Uh, the, I use a couple different ones, but you can see uh, this. This is just a screenshot of the main thing. You can do. There's tracking sheet. There's trade logs. You know, you can look at drawdown tables, expectancy t tables. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with this kind of software, and a lot of it's not that expensive. So. Here's an example of uh, if I dive into a trade log, this is my trade recording. Uh, this is on a couple strategies I was trading, my equity curve from a couple years ago, and the, the results and everything that was happening. So I, I record you know, my entry date, time, the quantity, the price, my stop price, target price. If I got out all at once where my exit price was, I can also get scale out of things. This sheet automatically calculates my uh, profit loss, whether it was a win loss. I can put in my different strategies. You can see the down here is all my different strategies. They're not all the same strategy. It has days of the week. It has uh, if it was a counter trend or a trend trade, which I put in. If it was a day trade or a scalp trade, or uh, it could be a long, it could be a swing trade. What time frame I was on. Uh, what my exit strategy was, whether I had a target, whether it was stopped out. Uh, some, like this one down here is a moving average trailing. That got me out. Then uh, if, if I made an error, in the, I can put in errors. Like I have, I have shortcuts for errors, uh, different kinds of trading errors that I occasionally make. I have different codes. So I can go, oh, I made a trading error. I got out. I, I calculated my target wrong. I did something wrong. I can put in that error code and make note of it because then I can find out later, well, in the last in the last quarter, how many times have I made that error? Like if it's if it's one or two, it's not, you know, I've, let's say I've done 200 trades or 300 trades in the last quarter and I've made that error a couple times, no big deal. But if I'm finding, hey, 20% uh, of the time I'm making this error, that's something I definitely need to figure out with what's going on in conjunction with my trade journal and address it with the feedback loop and figure out a, pro, a, a resolution for it. I can grade my trades, you know, I can, whether they're uh, good, great, poor, mediocre, I put in all my fees, which are my trading fees and my commissions and everything else, uh, whether it was a day trade or overnight, these were all day trades. It calculates stuff like my R multiples, my reward to risks. Uh, then it figures out is that the net profit and everything else in the equity of my of my account. So and it, it plots out my equity curve over time, my payoff. This I think what was this on this sheet right here? There's only 29 trades. My win percentage. Uh, 
and it calculates some other stats. So that's kind of the thing that some of these uh, little software spreadsheet programs could do. And if you want, you can pretty much, if you know Excel, program it yourself. Here's another one I use. It's a little more complex. Uh, I use this to figure out other things. And uh, this was for even longer ago. You can see this was back in 09. But this is this gets really advanced. All right, this is something you can get into with um, slicing and dicing the data multiple ways. And I'll show you that coming up also again. What kind of what kind of things we can look at? You know, this actually looks at standard deviations of it. Uh, looks at drawdowns, looks at stats based off day of the weeks, long, shorts, time of days, etc. So what to log? For every trade I do, I log the following information in a spreadsheet. I'm just going to review this again. I went through it really quick before, but I'm going to make sure I need the date and session, you know, pre-market. Maybe it's if the this is futures pit or it's during the normal stock trading hours. If it's mid-morning, if it's afternoon, evening, overnight, European session, Asian session, I'm going to put some notes so I can filter trades by that and see. Maybe I'm finding out that over time I'm doing some uh, some foreign exchange trades during the Asian session. I, I can call up those stats and what if, you know, what if my normal trading gives me about 62 percent winners but I look over the last quarter and my Asia trades during the Asian session are only like 30 percent accurate. I better look at that. I better figure out what's maybe I shouldn't be trading then. Maybe my strategy isn't conducive to that time. But that's going to give me information. Uh, so the strategy and or entry setup. What this is especially important if you're trading multiple strategies or entries. You want to know what they are because you want to be able to fil filter by that information. You don't just want to lump all your trading strategies together because then you won't know which ones you're having success with, which ones are causing you problems. Time frame. What time frames are you trading? Are you trading a tick chart, a five minute chart, a one hour chart, a 15 minute chart, a daily chart? Does not matter. You need to note that your time frames down. Well, of course, whether you were long or short, whether you were bought, buying or selling it, whether it's a binary, a spread, whatever it is, what is your position? Number of contracts, shares or lots, you know, what, how, what size did you put on? Entry price and time. You want to get this really down to the details and if you don't have the time, to do it right then, these are the things you're going to jot down even on your manual pages and then put it in later into your spreadsheet. So here's an example of logging the different trades. These happen to be all in the uh, crude and the uh, S&P 500 e mini contract. But here it has the quantity, the price, the stop price, the target price, the exit quantity, the exit price, and all that information I just went over. All right, what else to log? I also am logging the exit price and time for each exit if multiple. So maybe I get in with three contracts originally and I then get out at three different times. I'm going to take, make notes of each exit I did because then I can compare them to, let's say I got out with everything at once or scaling out. Which one's better for me? Which one works better for me? The exit reason was a was my target hit. Was it my initial stop? Was it a trailing stop? Was it a break even stop? My trade errors: exited trade early, move stop, etc. Now, if it's a, I'm not saying you move the stop like okay, it's part of my plan that uh, after it goes up a certain amount, let's say I'm long, and after it goes up a certain amount. I have a strategy that moves my stop up a certain percentage. That's fine. If you did that right, then great. But you don't say, oh, well, it hit my stop, so I shouldn't have moved it. No. If you're following your strategy, that's not an error. Now, if your error was you thought uh, you saw all of a sudden uh, you're long and you saw a big, maybe you're watching a candlestick chart, a big red bar, and it didn't hit your stop, it wasn't close to your stop yet, but you thought, ah, this thing's going to go against me, and you moved your stop, you crowded your stop. You moved it from where it should have been and you, where you should have left it. That's an ex And then it was hit. That could be a trade error, something like that. 
theoretical exits that I may be testing. For example, if I'm comparing taking profits off a fixed target versus trailing out with a trailing stop, I will track the actual exit I took at a fixed target to the theoretical exit and with the trail out. And I'll do that over time. And then I can compare those kind of things in the future. I could say, all right, which based off once I have enough, maybe I have 50 or 100 trades, I start analyzing the data. One's going to be working better than the other. Maybe uh, taking the profits off at fixed targets, you know, actually is better. Even I thought my trailing stop worked better, but it's maybe I just need to take them at fixed targets. It might be that I need to take all my contracts off at one point, or maybe scaling out works better for me psychologically and allows me to stay tra in trades longer. Those are the kind of things you're going to be testing, and you can test them both ways. You can take the trades. It, they can be real trades in your real account, but then also put down the other theoretical way you're testing and when you get out so you can compare it in the future. All right, here's another example. Uh, Bob, can you backspace? The keyboard's not working on. I can't control. Can you go back a couple? All right, thank you. Yeah, for some reason I don't have keyboard control. All right. Example of logging the trade. So this is some more examples. All right, so we again have the long or short. It calculates a profit or loss, winner or loser. This is the entry strategy, the day of the week that it occurred on, trend or counter trend. Was it a day trade or a scalping trade? What chart was it on? Uh, what exit strategy I use? We see the moving average trail, the targets. If my stop was hit. So those are the kind of things. I, I'm just showing them more in depth here. And uh, again, these are some things that are calculated automatically by the program, like the hours and minutes I was in the trade, how much I initially had on at risk based off where my stop was, my R multiple or my risk multiple, my reward to risk. Um, and it calculates, of course, net profit, cumulative doubt, uh, balance my drawdown. You know, when you have some losing trades in a row, you're going to get some drawdown in your account. What percentage drawdown are you going to have? And then you can see the closed equity. So now that I've logged all this, what am I going to do? With my trading log, I analyze the data in many different ways. I look at my equity curve by strategy, by the session, you know, by whether it was a morning session, afternoon session, the time of day, the day of week, the overall portfolio. I can look at these combined as the overall portfolio based on all these strategies, but I can also break out this other information. I can look at percent winners and losers by strategy. I can look at my profit factor by strategy, session, time of day, or day of week. I can look at my average winning trades versus losing trades by strategy session, time of day, and day of week. You can start getting very specific information. Frequency histograms of trades. I can look at my winners, the losers, the long, the short, and all the trades. I can see where they, if they're clustering around the center, central tendency or if I have really big winners and really big losers. For example, here's an example of analyzing the log. In this log, this is from the other sheet, 20 trades or 29 trades, 20 winners, 9 losers. I can look at the how they were, with the win percentage of my long trades, the win percentage of my short trades, the trade expectancy. I can look at how it was on days of the week. What immediately jumps out of you? Fridays. Okay, this is still a limited number of trades, but I'd start looking at this. What if I had only let's call it 30 trades in my log so far and I was starting to see this, this might just be a, a, a minor event. because. But if I start seeing this after 100 trades or 200 trades and I see Friday constantly poor results, I'm going to want to make note of that and really start looking at that as part of my feedback loop. My direction... Are they trend trades? What percentage? What win percentage of my trend trades? What win percentage of my counter trend trades? Those are the kind of stats I can look at. Uh, what percentage of my trades were target trades? What percent of my trades were stops? So if uh, was let's say I was using an average true range stop or a fib target, Fibonacci target or a trailing stop. 
I can put in my different strategies so I can code them in later. So then I can sort by all these things. Like a long rotation zone strategy, a short rotation zone, a double top, double bottom, long trend line trade, short trend line trade, etc. I can see already based off my strategies, you know, my short rotation zone at six trades only 50% winners. That may be done to market conditions or maybe there's a flaw in that strategy. But I can really start to look down. Things like short trend line trade. I only have one trade, so this isn't really a valid stat yet. But you know, when I get in 10, 20, 30 trades in here, this is the these numbers are gonna start making lots more sense. You know, and I, and I can look at my if I put on trades with bad reward to risk and I caught it later, you know, how often that happens. Uh, no market internals, when I ignored the market internals, how often that happens you know, and how I'm ranking my trades, you know. So those are all those kind of things. Then we can start getting into more and more complex stuff with the my highest wins, my highest losses, my averages, my largest losing streak, my largest winning streaks. I can start to look at those things. I can start to look at uh, my R multiples, which is linear regressions of my trades. You know, this better be upward sloping, else I have a problem, else my account's going to drain over time. I can look at my maximum drawdown, my risk amounts, etc., my trade expectancy. I can start getting into this is some more complex stuff that I do with spreadsheets. My uh, trade distributions. Okay, my frequency histograms for all my trades. Here's gains, here's, uh, let's see, here's on all my trades, my frequency histograms. So you can see here's losing trades and where they cluster with losing percentages. Here's winning trades and where they cluster with winning percentages. So you see here's, here's a scratch trade right around here. So most of the losers, on, based off all the strategies, were around 5.5%. You can see the winners clustered first around you had a little just above just above break even and then you dipped a little then you had some clustering around the upper fives and I don't what was that uh, around that 20 this I think this was based off ticks when I did this so this is 28 ticks profit these were four and eight ticks profit these were uh, minus 24 ticks Here's the frequency histogram of the winning trades, of course, they're all going to be above the zero level, but you can look at that. The frequency histogram of the losing trades, the frequency histogram of just my long trades, so I can see on my long trades where those are clustering, how many ticks I'm losing versus how much I'm making and where it's clustering around. Here's my short trades. All that kind of information can be very handy to spot, uh, are you holding winners too not long enough? Are you getting out way too early? Are your trades clustering in a certain area? And that could be a good or a bad thing. You look at your equity curves by strategy. Okay? So these are the different strategies and how much each one of them contributes to an equity curve. You can look at the equity curves by trade type and see how that is. And all right, on this strategy on a five-minute crude chart, here's my winning and losing trades by day. Here's my long trades and short trades by days. Here's how, of course, your winning trades are going to contribute to your equity curve and your losing trades are going to take away from it. But you can see how much your short trades are helping or hurting your curve, how much your long trades are. Here's your losing trades. Here's your winning trades. Here's your overall equity curve. You can look at your equity curves by session. So, you know, here's the morning session. Here's the afternoon session. So a lot of the trades based off these strategies were in the morning session. Most of them were day, a lot of them were day trades. You can see that here's the crude strategy. Most of them triggered in the morning. There were very few afternoon trades. Time of day which is really handy. All right, trades between 8.30 and 9.12, 9.12 .12 9 to 9.30, 9.30 to 10. And these can be broken out different ways depending on maybe there are certain reports come out. Maybe there are certain day, things you've noticed with your session. So I can see my, here's my 10 to uh, 1 p.m. That's, look at that equity curve versus some of these other ones. Some of them are very flat, 
they could even be negative. So that's something you could look at, like this one to one to nearly two fifty. That's really not a very strong equity curve based off here. Maybe I should look at either not taking trades at that time of day or looking at that strategy and how it works with that time of day. Here it is day of week. So you can see based off these strategies how it breaks out day of week. And especially maybe maybe the Friday was negative. Then you maybe don't end up trading on Friday or don't end up trading. Maybe it's Friday after 10.30 a.m. You find a large, you're, you're pretty much burned out for the week and you find that you're making a lot of mistakes. Maybe you stop trading on Fridays after 10.30 a.m. Maybe it's not conducive to your trading. You can find this out by first analyzing the days of the week then going back and analyzing the times. can also do something called Monte Carlo simulation and there's there's actually free Monte Carlo simulators out there uh, on the web there's some of these programs have it you can get from very basic to very advanced what is Monte Carlo simulation one of the benefits of gathering statistics on your trading results is that you can run them through a Monte Carlo simulation program Monte Carlo simulation is a technique that converts uncertainties in input variables of a model into probability distributions. By combining the distributions and randomly selecting values from them, it recalculates a simulated model many times and brings out the probability of an output. Essentially, it takes your trading stats and reorganizes them multiple different ways based off probability curves and then it generates theoretical equity curves. So you can start to see if, you know, how, you know, some people start to see, oh, I've had six losers in a row. Well, if you run a Monte Carlo simulator and you've, I've run these things hundreds of times on my trading strats and I know it's fully within expectation that I could have up to 10 losing trades in a row, then that shouldn't bother me. So these are the kind of things. You can also see equity curves that generates to know, hey, you might have a period of a flat couple months where you're not really making money, but the few months before then you were, you had a really nice equity curve. Maybe that's in line with something you can expect based off your trading stats. So, so this can be very beneficial to a trader because they can begin to see the range of outcomes that are possible with their trading method. This can help a trader know the possibilities and understand that there are winning and losing streaks and there might not be an issue with their trading as long as they are following the rules. It might fully be in the realm of what could happen based on your trading stats. Let's take a look at some examples. So we're going to be using this, this, uh, these trading stats. I'm actually going to bump them down a little. I'm going to say be a little more conservative. This came out with 623 trades, 55 stats, payoff ratio of 1.51. I'm an average R, meaning my risk to my reward to risk was 1.5. So I'm actually going to bump this down and say be a little more conservative. I'm going to start with my capital at $10,000. I'm going to risk 1% per trade. I'm only going to assume. 50% winners though. I'm going to say, okay, maybe I'm just going to go a little more conservative. I'm going to take that same payoff ratio and I'm going to take my commissions out. I'm going to run this through a bunch of different, through the Monte Carlo simulator. On this time I ran it through, this is in the realm of possibility for this trading strategy. I started off at 10,000. After 100 trades, I ended up just over with 10,197. I only had, look, this it's a realm of possibility. I only had 43 winning trades out of 100. So that actually is a possibility that even if my trading system has a 50% win rate based off 100 trades, I might could only win 43. But look, because of my uh, payoff ratio, it still came out slightly positive. This could happen to somebody off 100 trades. And their largest winning streak was six, their largest losing streak was six. We could run the simulator again. Same stats. Nothing's changed up here. Look at this. This happened to be worse. On a 50% winning system on 100 trades, it's within the realm of probability that you only had 38 winning trades. That what means you had 62 losing trades. 
Look at your final return. Even with a positive, you had a positive expectancy based off that trade payoff ratio, but you could end up being down nearly $1,100 theoretically, and it could still be within the realm of possibility based off these trading stats. So this could happen to you. You shouldn't be surprised. Now look at this. With these kind of trading stats, the largest losing streak is 12. So if you ran your trading stats through this kind of multi Monte Carlo simulations and ran a bunch of these different simulations, you're going to look at these numbers. Some are going to be good, some are going to be bad. But if you continue to trade this well, you could easily have up to 12 lo losing trades, even with a 50% winning system. It's in the realm of possibility. So look at this one. Same stats again. Based off simulating 100 trades, this time it came out with 66 winning trades. Well, a lot of people would love to see this, but you can't count on this all the time. It could have been the other two ones we just looked at. This turned that $10,000 into 18000 So this was a real good, this could happen to you in your 100 trades, but you can't count on this happening in every 100 trades. This would be a very positive streak of 100 trades. Look at this. Largest win streak, eight. Largest losing streak, three. It's in the realm of possibility. But if you start kidding yourself that every 100 trades is going to look this way, it's not going to always turn out that way. You could have had this one turn out, and you could have just also had the next 100 trades could have been the prior spreadsheet, all right, with that, that actually ended up losing you money over 100 trades. And then the next 100 trades could be like the first one looked at, where you just made a little. You could put all those back to back to back, have 300 trades, and if you thought it was always going to look like this equity curve or the other two, you are kidding yourself either way. That's why it's very important to run your trade stats. And this is just a very simple Monte Carlo. There's, you can put in even more and more trade stats, frequency distributions, and everything else, and really look at your stats and really analyze it a bunch of different ways to really find out, hey, What's my potential winning streaks? What are my potential losing streaks? What are my potential ranges of return on equity if these trade stats hold up and I continue to perform the way I do? What does a Monte Carlo simulation do for you essentially? Well, what you're seeing with the examples that Mike just gave you is distributions that you may not expect most of you have traded or are going to trade for a short period of time. Obviously, if you're starting out as traders, you're not going to be trading that long. So you're not going to have a lot of data. But when you get your first set of data, you may choose not to run a Monte Carlo situation. We think you should, or simulation rather. We think you should, but you may choose not to. But what you're missing out on if you don't have your trades logged, okay, and you don't have your trade journal done, is the ability to do it at all. Right, let me just jump back. Let's let's say, can you, let me just go back. I'm going to have to do it this way. Let's say these were actually, you, your, tr let's say long term you have these trade stats up here. But in the next 100 trades you do, you actually produce this kind of result. Should you count on this kind of result every time? No, because you could also have had your next 100 trades could produce a result similar to this. Should you be shocked then if you see these trades? Should you throw out your strategy? Should you say, oh, I'm hopeless because my first 100 trades gave me a really nice equity curve like this, but then the next 100 gave me something like this, or the next 100 gave me something like this where it just goes up and down and chops around? I thought I was doing really well. This is in the realm of possibility. It can also help you not mess with something. Because if you know you could have a losing streak, like that could be with these trading stats, have up to a 12 loss losing streak based off of reorganizing. And if the trades happen in a different order, this is in the realm of possibility. This, if you see these kind of results, then even in the short term, you don't automatically assume that my everything's broken. I got to start over from scratch. My trading strategy I spent so much time on is not working. So it can help you. Help you know when there is something potentially wrong or when there is not something potentially wrong. Now, all this gives you feedback, as Bob talked about in the beginning of this. The more ways you can get feedback on your trading and your trading strategies, the more you can figure out what's working, what's not, and what are you going to do about it. 
And some people start to see, oh, I've just hit five losers in a row, and they want to throw out their whole strategy. Well, if that's in the realm of possibility of you can have up to 12 losers in a row, why would you be throwing out your strategy after five? So those are the kind of things you have to analyze. And again, this may seem like a lot for you guys right now when you're looking at these probability distributions and things like that, because again, most of you have come to Nadex for the simplicity of it, right? None of this is possible if you don't start logging all your trades. None of it. Again, you may choose not to do it in the beginning. Um, again, we advise that you do at some point. But you came to Nadex for simplicity, but you also came to trade, right? If you're not logging your trades, there's zero opportunity for you to do this because I promise you to go back and try and fill in all that data, not only is it a high probability it'll be inaccurate, but there's also a high probability you won't do it. So trade log, all trades versus my trades. When you're learning a new trading system or trading methodology at the end of every day, keep a trade log of all valid entries that occurred during that day. Compare that every week to the entries you actually took. Then determine if you should have been in a market, <clears throat> excuse me, then determine if you should have been in the trades that were not the same. This helps you determine the following. Is this the correct strategy for me? Did I pick the best time to trade the strategy? Or do I have issues with my execution of the strategy? Screenshots. Also, if you can, which you should, Try and take screenshots of the trades when you execute them and keep them in a directory to review because this can help you see exactly what the market looked like when you took the trade without the additional market information on, on the screen, i.e. the later price action. In other words, when you're looking at a particular chart or a particular screen, you don't have the future price action there. You take the trade and then you take a screenshot while you're taking it because then you can go back and look and say, okay, now I've seen the price action after the trade, let me go back and look at the time that I put the trade on and see again if that was the right thing to do. If you're trading a strategy that using trailing stops, also take screenshots of the exits to ensure you're trailing out correctly. So here's an example. You have a short trend line trade below a defining point and into what we call a clear path or space. You sell below the yellow line you have a stop above the significant level, which is a blue line. And again, all of this can be, um, you can take this particular type of a within Nadex spreads or binaries, and it's the same screenshot because you're getting off of a strategy. So you have a first target being the red line and a second target being a measured move extension with a third target being a trailing close above the EMA. Now keep in mind as we talk about targets through screenshots like this, all targets are there's a place where an action is determined to be necessary, whether that means executing the trade, moving a trailing stop, executing part, or, I'm sorry, exiting part of the trade. That's all a target is. A target doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get out of the trade. It just means that an action is necessary. So now you've got the trade, and here you can hit the red line, and in our case, this would be a first exit. So let's say you had three contracts on, you would exit one of those contracts. All right, now it rolls up hits the EMA again, rolls back down to the second exit point, and then the third exit point we had as a close above the EMA. So let's say you had a longer term binary on, all right? Something where you had three or four hours left. Here you could cover one of the contracts, here you could cover the second, and while we're below the EMA, you're thinking, okay, unless it closes above the EMA, I'm gonna go ahead and let this expire. Here it closed above the EMA and you got out. These are screenshots of the exits that you're taking and putting into a journal or a log. Now, don't get overwhelmed with all the information we just covered with the trade log. Okay, that's the typical response for things like this. There are programs and spreadsheets out there that will do most of the things we covered automatically. Most of the programs are very inexpensive and well worth the money. If you're savvy at building spreadsheets, you can even do it yourself. If you just take the time every day to log your trades into the spreadsheet, the benefits will outweigh the few minutes a day that you spend. If you think about how many trades you do in a day, there's very few of you that I talk to that are doing more than 10 trades a day. Okay, if you are, you're probably over trading at this stage or you have a high frequency strategy, which is fine. But even in the case of 10 trades a day, you're talking about a few minutes to log in 10 trades. 
It really doesn't take that long, especially if you're doing it as you go along. The trade journal is there to accompany your trade log. They are separate documents, but they work together. The trade journal is like a diary where you record what's going on while you're in the trades that you record into your trade log. You can put down things again, like how are you feeling, thoughts you're having, things you're thinking about as the trades you put on, as you manage them, and as you take them off. This is to help you notice patterns you may be experiencing while trading. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the only good time to decide what's going to happen to a trade is prior to getting in it. Okay? You can also do some review of trades, but you're not going to make good decisions while you're in a trade. It's just too emotional of a time. It's also important to have while you're reviewing your trade log, since it will remind you what you were thinking, feeling, or actions you took while in the trade that may have helped or hurt the trade. A lot of you have probably heard that cliche, nobody ever went, uh, went I'm sorry, nobody ever um, went broke taking profits. You actually can go broke if you take profits too early, as long as you don't have a 100% correct system, which nobody does. So if you're taking profits too early, you actually can go broke. So you plan these things ahead of time to take profits at the correct time. Now, weekly review and plan update. It's important that you review your trading log and trading journal at the end of every week. If you spot things that you need to work on, then update your trading plan. If you've learned more about a strategy or realize that the entry or exit rules are not specific enough, then you update your strategy section. I mentioned this last week, that in some of our strategies, we have basic and then advanced. Once you've covered the basic and have learned the basic, we then advise that you move into the advanced rules. That would be the, that's what fits into this third point. If you learn more about a strategy, right, then you update your plan. Also, spend the time to go back and review every trade you took to make sure that you were following your trading plan. If you don't review the information, then you will not have a feedback loop. How do you know what to do and what not to do in terms of improving? How do you know what to take out? How do you know what to add to your plan if you're not reviewing things? Let's talk about putting it all together. Hopefully at this point you see the benefit of having a well-defined trading plan as well as a trading journal and a trade log. All three of the components are part of the feedback loop and are necessary to help you excel as a trader. Again, if you don't plan on taking trading seriously, you won't end up doing this. That's just the way it is. And a lot of traders, when they do this the first time, instead of updating their plan, they start to put their plan aside. Your plan will evolve over time and is not a one-time exercise. Don't think that when you write your initial plan and you have an initial burst of success, then now it's time to close the plan up, leave it in the corner of the desk, leave it on the shelf, and not look at it again. It's quite the, or quite the opposite. You're going to want to continue to work on your plan and your log. When this becomes part of the process of trading, it becomes a very comfortable thing. It's like, okay, I just did a trade, let me log it. Um, you know, it's a little stressed out, had a little too much coffee, let me put that down in my journal. And then Saturday morning, grab a cup of coffee, grab some breakfast, and start flipping through the pages of the week's log and journal. This is what professional traders do. You can do it at the end of the day, but a lot of the times you're emotionally drained and you're tired and you have other things to do during the course of the day. The weekend's the best time to do it. But the plan evolves. It's a living document. It's not something that happens in the first go. So some miscellaneous stuff. If you're not willing to work on a trading plan, you need to ask yourself, how dedicated you are to trading and what is stopping you. Okay, if you're talking about trading success, you're going to have some sort of a plan. I also mentioned this last week. Can you go to the grocery store without a list and be 100% complete each time you shop? Most people would say no to that. You can't go into a trading scenario without a plan. Once you determine what is stopping you, then you can ask yourself how you're going to address that issue. The same goes for your trading journal and your trade log. Remember to ask the what questions and not the why questions. Okay, don't ask why something happened. Look into your log and see what happened. Look into your journal and see what was going on. The what question is more important than the why question for traders. What happened and what am I going to do to change it if it needs changing? Once you get an answer to the what, then the next question is how. How am I going to improve? How am I going to do better? Do I have a negative feedback loop created? Am I going to take something out? Or do I have a positive feedback created? Do I need to add something in? Again, thanks for this. We're happy again to take questions.
results. If you guys just do the work, the results will follow. The work seems overwhelming when you're getting this webinar and you're seeing all the stats that Mike showed you and all the curves and the different probabilities that come. Most people just kind of like throw their hands up and say, say, there's no way that I can do this. If you actually go back to the first webinar, it starts out fairly simple. You do your strategy section, you do your, your daily routine section, and then you slowly start to log and journal and log and journal. You'll find the exercise actually very satisfying because you will see patterns. Okay, this is what happens. Please follow us on Twitter at path underscore trading, like us on Facebook, and visit us at pathtradingpartners.com. A lot of free stuff for you guys to sign up for. And again, my favorite, Money Path Podcast, usually comes out on Saturday. Android, iTunes, you can get the link to our website to that podcast, and we cover a lot of this stuff. And you can see how a couple of regular guys are actually succeeding at trading. So we're very happy to take some questions, and there's some filling up the questions box, so I'll go right into those. Mike, if you want to turn your mic on again. Scott says he's here to succeed, and I'm very happy that with that, Scott, if you put in the work, that's what's going to happen. As a beginner, what is the best plan that I can put together to set up my first trade? Lori, the first thing you need is A, commitment, and then B, a strategy that you're trading. Remember that Nadex products are set up very simply for you. They're a great place for you guys to start, but you still need a strategy that you're following, whether it be price action strategy, which is what Mike and I do, or whether you have some sort of fundamental strategy, which I'm not comfortable with, but <clears throat> some people are. You have to have a strategy that you trade. Put your strategy down on paper. That's the start of your plan. So start with that, Lori, and then again, go back and listen to these two webinars. Essentially, what these two webinars are, especially the first one, is a template for you guys to follow. All right? Can you suggest a decent software from Oscar? Let's see. I, ST says he needs to review the first part. Good. Can you suggest a decent software? So... Full disclosure, this is not our company, and, and we don't sell any software ourselves, but there is, what, what's the name of that company again, Mike, that one that you showed the screenshots from? Well, uh, just, do, have, just have them email us. Yeah, email us. Go to support at pathtradingpartners.com, and we can send you a link to a specific company that we've dealt with before, but again, not our company. We're not the ones selling it, so if you're buying it from them, you're buying it from them. I just need to put that out there. Um, but you can email us, support at pathtradingpartners.com, and we'll get you guys that link. Uh, it's very easy and very affordable software. Is this webinar recorded, and where is it posted? Victor, it is recorded. I'll show you guys that again, if you want, where you can find this and where you can find the other one. It is right here. All right, so let's go back to the homepage. You go to nadex.com, all right? Go to Learning Center, and go to Webinar Archives. Okay, you can see here's the first one. Just look for our little logo there. Build your trading plan part one is here. This is the beginner's template, okay, that um, Lori asked about. All right, the beginner's template is here. You follow the steps in this webinar, and then this particular webinar will be posted there as well, okay? You're very welcome, Oscar. There's the section again. I'm just going to show you guys again the path. Nadex.com, Learning Center, down to Resources, Webinar Archives. Click on that, and you look for our logo here. Here's Build Your Trading Plan Part 1. All right? Good? What else, guys? Anything? Scott, you've been to a lot of these, so I believe you're here to succeed. That's good to see. Questions box is empty. I'll give it a few more minutes. You're welcome, Raul. Appreciate it. Scott, you can go to our website and find everything you need to know. Reach out to us and support. We can kind of guide you along. You know, we put up a lot of free stuff, but we do have actual courses that you guys can purchase. Uh, we have members. We do webinars for them. Uh, we'd be happy to have you guys. Most of the people in these webinars go and they sign up for our free stuff, and we're happy to have you. But uh, go check out the actual courses and see if there's anyone that suits you. All 
All right, questions have slowed down. I'll give it another couple of minutes, and then we will just thank you guys for listening. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks again, Mike. Thank thanks for your time. Thank you. Nadex, thanks for having us, and we will speak to you guys next Tuesday, same time. Cheers, everybody.